How's it going, Northwest Green Boys? Last time out, we got obliterated. If we look at the calendar, uh, we won two games out of the... I don't even know how many we played. I think we started uh, this Miami series. So loss, loss, loss. Uh, yeah, that, it's a lot of losses. <laughs> Not a whole lot of wins. We're less than 20 days from the draft. So we're going to probably just sim to that and play maybe a couple of critical situations. But uh, I think that the losing is going to continue pretty early on in this episode. We get a win against the Mets somehow for nothing. Maybe things have turned around today. Maybe we can even win the series. Uh, you know, we're going to hop in and try to do this. We have a one run lead. We just got to get one out. Paul Seawald, the man to do it. Let's see what we can do. As a team, we have given up the fewest home runs in the league. Uh, we've gotten quite a few. Jared Kelnick has a home run in this game. As Seawald kind of hung the slider in there, but we get strike number one. Again, all we need is one out. A base hit sends this one to extra innings or worse as we get him swinging on the outside fastball for strike two. Can we make this just a quick three-pitch inning? Oh, or outing for us, I guess. Good eye from Marte there. I'm going to go a high two-seamer. Try to curve it back inside. Perfect throw, and he swings and misses. It's another save for, for Paul Seawald. That's back-to-back -back wins. We didn't see that at all last episode. We get it today. You love to see it, and we win this series against a, a really good Mets team. The injuries continue. Robbie Ray, shoulder tightness, out for just one to six days, so hopefully he can just get some rest anyways, but... Oh, man, like our two best starting pitchers are on the injured list right now. Paul Seawald gets his 13th save as just skip one of these Toronto games. Unfortunately, we don't have time for all of these. We lose 6-5 in that one. That's a bit of a shame. And maybe we can win one of these. There's another loss. 18 and 25, man. We started with two wins. Uh, we're back to 500 on the episode. It was Jose De Jesus pitching. Uh, he gets another loss. He's been having a rough season. 13.5 ERA, which is five strikeouts in seven innings. Toronto it might shut us out on the series, but we got to jump in here. And I mean, Murphy, an 11 game hitting streak. We're not worried about that one either. So we're going to lose that one 11 6. Trying to hope for the best. We're two weeks away from the draft. If we can go in there looking okay, that'd be fine. We just need to put a string together. Boston, 16 and 27 on the season. These have to be games that we pick up. We have to beat other teams below 500. We win the first one, 5-3. Robbie Ray back from injury. And we're going to try to make sure that we win this one. Tied up, bottom of the ninth, zero outs. Let's go in with Jose De Jesus and try to win this one in extra innings. We know we need to plan for this to go to extra innings. So let's go to the bullpen, which is, man, it's been depleted in this game. Uh, but we will start to warm up Paul Seawald and hope that he can get us a save. Going with the cutter. Jose first pitch to Xander Brogarts. No outs. Oh my gosh, I left that one directly over the middle of the plate. <laughs> we already know his ERA is terrible right now. Over 13, so anything we could do to lower that one at this outing is going to be really important. Just the five strikeouts as well. Sweeping curve, gets to Suarez, and Eugenio gets it to first in time. Ty France gets or stays on the bag for out number one. Really don't want to be walked off here. Devers in. This has me absolutely terrified. The man can absolutely bat. First pitch swung on and fouled off for strike number one. Second pitch tried to get this cutter a little bit further down. And that one's going to be popped up for Kyle Lewis. Two outs through two batters. One more to go until we can go to extra innings. Oh, J.D. Martinez up to bat. Let's just keep throwing this cutter. It's the pitch I feel most confident with for Jose as we do get the strike there. Go with the low change up. See if maybe we can get him to ground out or just pop it up. Or maybe a swinging strikeout. Sweeping curve. Yeah, maybe we can get him swinging out of his shoes on this one. Feeling confident. Not perfect, but he does swing and foul it off. Just barely. This seems like a great time to go to that high inside cutter. Just completely changed the batter's eye on that one. Caught the top of the zone. Ump doesn't call it. Well, we got him swinging on one curveball. Maybe we can do it again. And there's the strikeout to add the ninth. That is just Jose's sixth strikeout of the season. We have a chance to win this game. This could be really, really big. 
Top of the order coming around for us with Garrett Whitlock on the bump. Uh, Harry Ford, the catcher? I think he's a catcher. Uh, one of our big prospects. Was that 80 speed? 80 speed, 34 steal. This is great news for us. Just need to get him to third. And the base hit. Ah, thought about sending him home. Thought about sending him home. I don't know. 80 speed, he might have had it. But we get the runner into scoring position on the first pitch. A risky one, but we shoot the gap in the infield. I'd be honestly a little bit tempted to go for the suicide squeeze, but all we need to do is just put one into the outfield. Wait for our pitch. If they want to walk us and walk the bases loaded, I don't mind it. We have two at-bats that we can work with so long as we don't bat into a double play here. Frazier just the 49 speed on first has me a little bit worried. Let's see what we see from the second pitch. Terrible swing. I might have just changed up anything. He could have been trying to walk us, honestly. It seems foolish, but you never know. He's really not throwing strikes. I guess he got us to chase on the first or change up. Thought he could get it to again. Struggling to talk. 2-1. That's going to be it. I'm going to send him. Hoping for the best. It's out. I'm throwing. I thought that was perfect. Uh, I should have just waited. We had Jesse Winker coming up to bat. It would have been one out. He's going against a righty. <laughs> what am I doing? Oh, just absolutely wasted that one. And now they honestly have a very good reason to walk us. Other than just a base hit, potentially getting Frazier home. Two O's the count. Three O's the count. What is that call? That is such a good pitch. Uh, the ump doesn't bail him out. Could we see a four pitch watch walk? Maybe bring up Mitch Hanniger. And there it is. Tempted to swing there, but we get a runner back into scoring position with that. Hanniger is sitting two for five on the day. This would have had the bases loaded with one out. If I wasn't stupid, the no doubt home run over the monster. Three run homer. Could have been a grand slam, but we will take that. Mitch Hanniger is raking for us at this point in the season. That is exactly what we needed. I think we can bring in Paul Seawald and absolutely survive with that one. 425 feet. That's out on the street behind the stadium. Exactly what we needed. Hey, we got another at bat at least. Another out to work with. Maybe we can extend that one. Oh, man. I like how like all my hits in the past couple of episodes have been pretty much home runs. Kyle Lewis up to bat. They bring in Jake Diekman to pitch. 11 to 8. This is a high scoring affair, and we have the chance now to win it in extra innings. I didn't think we were going to do anything after I threw away the run. But, oh man, I'm feeling it now. Kyle Lewis not looking too good against lefties this season, just batting 111. And fouling that one off. A couple of middle, middle fastballs, and we couldn't really get on either one of them. Not great contact. Pretty solid power, though. Against lefties, and oh my gosh. <laughs> we shouldn't have made that good a contact, but that was close to being another one. One to the count, trying to stay alive. We do take the ball. You know, if we strike out here, if we ground out, fly out, we get out. Doesn't really matter to me. We've done our job. Every extra pitch that we see is good for the rest of this series, though. Tire out their pitchers a little bit more, and every extra run is just good for the morale of the team. Get more sponsorship money. And three and two full count. We swing on what likely would have been a, a, a strike. Stay alive. Eight pitch at bat so far. And the eight, eighth pitch was probably a ball, but you never know in this game. Some, some umps would call that. We see six is good, but four is not. You never know. Three, two. <laughs> Again, just chopping them off. Staying alive. Nine pitches. This is pitch number 10 for Diekman. <laughs> Continue to foul him off. Man, what is this going to be? A 20 pitch at bat? Trying to just get anything going. Diekman probably getting frustrated. All he needs to do is that, I guess. Pop us up. Not going to make it anywhere near the wall. Kind of got him on the warning track. Closer than I thought. It's going to be an easy out at the end of that one. And Mitch Hanniger. <laughs> Point to the camera, buddy. You are the reason that we are looking really, really good. Three outs away from a win now. 
Unfortunately, I can't keep Jose De Jesus in in a situation like that. So we will, oh gosh, bring in Paul Seawald. Runner on second, have to be worried about that one. And that was a scary first pitch cutter into the dirt. Second pitch slider grounded. It's gonna keep the runner at second. And man, that one slowly rolls to Suarez, but he throws it over to Ty France for out number one. If it was a four-run lead, if we would have hit a grand slam there, I would think about a walk here instead. We got to look for a strikeout. Man, how is that a ball? Bobby Dahlbeck kind of getting lucky early in on early on in this one as whew, left the slider right over the middle of the plate. He's going to miss the swing. Strike number one. Another slider. Strike number two. We're going to that two-seamer high and inside. And it's strike number three. Ooh, two outs. Feeling confident now. Don't have to worry about a double play ball. Kike Hernandez up to the plate. Good four-seamer high. He fouls off on pitch number one. Going to go back to the same pitch, similar location. He fouls that one off for strike number two. And just like that, the Red Sox down to their final strike of this game. The slider low, and he's going to get rung up on it. Paul Seawall, another save. Mitch Hanniger, the three-run homer, puts us in a good spot, and man, we could not have asked for a whole lot more. Mitch Hanniger actually had two home runs in that game. I didn't realize he already had one stepping up to the plate, so that is fantastic. Jose De Jesus gets a win. That's a rare win for him as uh, we're going to take the series lead. And the question is, can we win the series? We're going to be skipping this one. Mariners win 5-2. That looks good. And every single time we sim, bad things happen. A broken hand for Eugenio Suarez. He's going to be out for one to two months, man. Things are just not going well. Our good players are falling all the time. That's going to put Abraham Toro at our third base as uh, Chris Flexen pitching. He doesn't get the win, and we lose 2-1. With just nine days left until the draft, let's just go ahead and sim our way there. Oakland is a win. The first game against the A's, that's good news. Second game in the series is another win, and the Blue Jays have offered us a trade. Is this something we want? They want Ian McKinney, and they'll give us uh, Yusei Kikuchi. I think he's a Japanese player, right? Let's take a look. Starting pitcher for starting pitcher. They dump off $13 million in salary for a 76 overall 30-year-old pitcher. Uh, and we dump off uh, $50,000 in salary for a 27-year-old 69 overall pitcher. Uh, you know, I'm tempted to say yes. Uh, just because 76 overall is pretty solid. We have Logan Gilbert out injured still. But, uh, I don't know, 30 years old, his contract is eh, a couple more years. Drops down to $10 million by 2024. He's got a the 95 mile an hour four seam. How's he throwing so far this year? I'm not feeling too confident. 1.33 whip, a 6.08 ERA, and a negative 0.7 war. I just don't think we can accept that. So we are looking at the final game here, 23-27, fighting our way back towards 500. We're looking real good this episode compared to the last episode. And the A's 17-33 last in our division. Can't get the win, so we sweep them at home. Well, we did okay last time we played the Astros, lost the series 2-1. Can we get the win this time? Uh, 0-5 on the first game. It's a 6-2 win on the second game. And for the third game, Marco Gonzalez pitching gets the win 10 to 2. Oh my goodness, we obliterated. So with the draft just in one day, we will go ahead and sim this game against Baltimore. I think we got the loss. Oh my gosh, 1-7 against the 21 and 35 Orioles squad. Uh, man, we're only three games back of 500, so that feels really good. A good end to the month of May, but we are on to the month of June. And we can go ahead now and finally sim to the draft. This is going to be important for us. I'm not entirely sure how well we will do, but let's go ahead. The 2022 first year player draft. Can we find somebody good? We are picking, gosh, we are picking quite a ways down the order here. 20th. Um, Do we have any? We don't really have a whole lot of uh, compensatory picks, it seems like, so... It's going to be kind of interesting. Hopefully we can find somebody good here. 
just go ahead and advance towards our first pick. And man, a lot of guys being taken off the board. I'm not sure if I'm seeing anything that looks really good. All really high potential guys, though. Um, I'm curious. I mean, obviously, we got to go high potential here. But let's go ahead and see what we've got. Obviously, first I'm looking at... Uh, oh, I do not want to pick Frank Dominguez. That would be disastrous. The sort button is different in this screen. And we're in a tough spot. Do we go with the current overall? Do we go with high potential? Kevin Reyes could be a good flyer late in the rounds. As far as guys that we've actually scouted, uh, Felipe Mosquera, uh, the second baseman. He's MLB ready, 75 potential, 70 overall. He could be really good. I think we could probably wait at least one round for him, but I'm not entirely sure who else we pick. Um, uh, the best guy that we have available is a blue chip, uh, Johnny Park. 80 potential current 65 overall he's a closing pitcher 22 years old a little bit older than you would want but seems pretty solid uh doesn't throw the fastest ball but has a sweeping curve splitter change up and i just think uh we have to pick a good high potential guy we already know we need a closer we could probably use a starting pitcher uh and then i don't know maybe we look somewhere a catcher would be really nice and then something in the infield. So we're going to start off uh, on a flyer with Johnny Park. Draft him as our first pick. And uh, hope for the best is, man, things are just flying by here. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm seeing anything good. Oh, did we not get a pick in the second round? I guess we lost one because of uh, free agency or something. So on to the third round. That's going to severely limit our selection of players. Do we have anybody who we've even looked at? We have a couple of guys. Robert Reese, the left fielder, seems like maybe one day he could be good. But at this point, I'm looking at potential and uh, current overall. And we're going to take a flyer on the reliever, I think. We got to go best pick available. Um, I mean, the, we could go Luis Esparza, the starter, who looks like he could be really good. Or we could, uh, in the future, or we could go with Kevin Reyes, who looks like he could be good right now. I guess I also have to add on to that list, Dan Bradshaw. Uh, <laughs> I mean, do we pick him because of the freaking mutton chops? What is the facial hair going on there? That's pretty impressive. Dan also has the quickest 60-yard dash out of everybody. Um, Yeah, okay, we're going to pick Dan. <laughs> I, did, I mean, we don't have... A whole lot of accuracy on most of these guys. We didn't find anybody crazy, so we picked Dan. Uh, again, not really finding the catcher that we want, but that's where we're at as we head into round four. Both Reyes and Esparza are currently available. Reyes has the lower potential, but has the higher current overall, which makes me feel like we want him. But I did want a starting pitcher, so Luis Esparza is who we're going to draft. He's 21 years old out of Venezuela definitely don't mind that hopefully he's pretty solid and i'm curious who's going to be available to us in round five here just a couple of picks left as we again are trying to sort and look for anything useful there are no good catchers available honestly i'm not happy with any of this but like there's just nobody good available so we're gonna draft for potential and take a flyer on uh, Phil Borbin or David Long? Phil Borbin has a funny name. Puerto Rican throws a 93 mile an hour fastball, a 79 mile an hour curveball, and a decent changeup. Or David Long, who's a year older from Texas, got a big pitch repertoire, but doesn't throw anything all that crazy. Would have loved to have gone for something else. Uh, it's pretty much all pitchers here, but just that's the only thing that's good available, and that's what we're drafting for. Best available pick, in my opinion, so... Uh, we're going to go MLB ETA. We're going to take the 22-year-old David Lang. Uh, see what the Texan can do for us. He's six foot two, Pretty tall guy. He runs a decent 60-yard dash. A little bit slower than Phil Borbin. Who knows? Maybe Phil will be available in the next round. And, oh, no. The Reds just took Phil Borbin just in front of us. So, who's available even at this point in the draft? You got to go potential, right? So, uh, the only 80 overall potential left is a freaking relieving pitcher. We're going to take all pitchers in this draft. But, uh, who knows? Bobby Denton coming out of New York. Throws a pretty big heater. 96 mile an hour fastball with the slider and the cutter. Uh, what is his best stuff? Velocity and break. He's got a decent uh, bit of fielding. It's not good strikeouts per nine. Decent on the walks and hits. Uh, we'll see. Maybe he could end up really good in a few years' time. 
not feeling too confident really curious to see what it is that we get i gotta say right off the bat i don't think we have a high draft grade just all pitchers couldn't find anybody good uh anywhere else on the field so our hitting isn't improving i was really hoping we were gonna find the next mike trout but who knows maybe we're finding the next cy young well let's take a look see what we got out of our draft picks if we got anything good i don't feel all that confident a potential for johnny park that's our blue chip 91 potential okay well we got something there with the closer he's a current 70 overall dan bradshaw 71 potentially 62 it's not too great after the first pick we got the blue chip who is good 61 overall with a 72 potential for luis esparza david lang is a 57 overall with 77 potential he's actually like the second best player that we drafted and bobby denton the new yorker 49 overall with a 69 potential uh well for sure we'll sign david lang just give him uh, a pretty mediocre contract but johnny park our first round pickup, a potential 70 overall. That's good news for us. Um, he, he doesn't seem like the greatest pitcher, but in a year or two, I mean, 70 overall, I, yeah, he, he could make a, a difference as a closer. Trying to offer him as little as we can, though. So 70K, he's going to accept that. And we'll just have to think about signing the rest of these guys because uh, I'm not sold. Maybe Dan Bradshaw just because he's 19, but I don't think that Bobby Denton's going to make it onto the team well unless you call the draft a bit of a bust i would call this a pretty successful episode uh we got much closer to 500 on the season only two games back of that and eight games back of the angels which i think we were like nine and a half games back seven and three in our last ten we're starting to look okay starting to get into a little bit of a groove and the next stage is the all-star week so We'll see if we can have a good June. We had a bad start to May and a great end, and April was just solid for us. So uh, we need a good June to set us up for a good July. But it looks like we have some winnable series. Uh, we just have to make sure that we make the most of it. Unfortunately, that is going to have to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed this one, please hit the like button and subscribe as well. Uh, anything you guys can do to show support for these videos is important because unfortunately posting baseball on a NCAA football focused channel means that uh, typically we're going to get a, a lot fewer views. So if you're looking for an easy way to support the channel, that's the way to do it. Uh, head down to the comments. I want to know what you guys think about our drafting. Uh, I feel like we were in a good spot. <laughs> Johnny Park seems like he could be a really solid closing pitcher in the future, but I just wish that we could have found somebody with a really good bat and maybe a better starting pitcher. But I know that it's also impossible to strike gold with every single pick, especially in the later rounds. After you've done all that, you can head down to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash coonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and our community Discord. All that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Northwest Green Boys. And wherever you are, have a good night and have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios. Special thanks to our Tier 3 members, Durham Finch, Avery Binkley, and Warmaster777.